Barcelona is one of my favorite cities in the world, especially when you're staying at the W Hotel, which is right here behind me, and we've got the beach right over there. But why am I in Barcelona? I'm here because the WGS conference is taking place at the W over the next few days. This is a conference in the gambling industry that attracts the most senior industry professionals. I am here to educate these professionals on blockchain technology and also to moderate two panels on the subject. I am so excited to be here, so let's get started. A lot of people here are already interested in blockchain technology, including some experts on the subject. I talked with a few speakers and delegates to get a feel for where we are going with this technology in the gambling space. We have a very good proposition, a very unique proposition that we're taking into the marketplace. And so from the regulators, we're being very well received because they're seeing uh, blockchain as a progressive technology that is enhancing and protecting a player's experience. And from the operators, we're seeing a, um, a great response from them because they're suddenly seeing the benefits of utilizing blockchain technology to uh, notarize or doc document the interactions with their players and the documentation that is needed for them to maintain their regulatory obligations, compliance, AML, KYC, etc. There's no problem with blockchain, it's just a, a more secure form of um, data transmission and storage. So whether or not we like blockchain, understand it, it's there in the background, it's happening, and uh, we'll try to find the positives with it and minimize any uh, negatives and worries that people have about it. Yeah, and what, what are your thoughts at, uh, in regards to the Hippo Hippodrome Casino using blockchain tech to do any, this sort of thing? Anything that we can do that makes it more secure for us, for our customers, mm. all the better. I know there's a lot of people that do have concerns about Big Brother and all the conspiracy type theories about where the data is being used and who gets to see it. So we have to be mindful of actually customers and their acceptance, um, but we are getting there. The NFT space specifically is uh, an absolute uh, must uh, to dig into now. You know, we are, we are still in the early days of the NFT tech. And I think what we've seen so far of um, NFTs blowing up in the digital art space is just the beginning, really. I think uh, that is how people perceive NFTs today. But I don't think that is how people will perceive NFTs and what they can do with this technology in the future. And in order to understand what we can do with this technology, uh, we need to facilitate those conversations uh, in order to understand where this technology is going. Instead of having 100 apps that you play and you buy virtual and currency items on, instead of having to put your credit card information in every single time, Amazon is another one that figured this out, e-commerce as a whole has uh, figured this out, you put in your information to a single place and then from there you're able to tap into it across multiple uh, products. In in a sense, uh, blockchain technology that exists today would also facilitate the same thing. So I am here at the second day of WGES and I am preparing for the two blockchain panels that I am about to moderate here. The first one is about blockchain payments and how to make them sustainable in the future. And the second one is after 10 years, how has blockchain technology developed in the gambling industry space? So really looking forward to both of these. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming. Can you speak a, a bit about micropayments, especially the types of payments that can be done using BSV, for example, with its super, super low fees? Sure. So in the online space, if you're an operator, you have affiliates, you have content suppliers, 
and everybody has to get paid. You could have potentially somebody, again, using BSV as a, a great example here, you could have a penny slot where you can pay out your affiliate when that new user comes in based upon their play. You can pay them in real time every single time that penny slot is spun. You can pay your content uh, supplier every single time a spin uh, takes, case, uh, takes place, excuse me, predicated on your theoretical loss. So again, we're talking fractions of a penny that move in real time through smart contracts. Every single spin, there's no more delays in payments. Affiliates would be more inclined to want to work with you because they're not going to wait for money. And most importantly, they can validate truly on chain what transpired. There's no more having to say, trust us. We're doing right by you. We're giving you every last penny that you deserve. You're actually getting it in real time. So affiliates are businesses. Uh, we're media owners. Uh, we've got cash flow. We've got, we're doing media buying. We've got staff to pay. So cash is always king. Uh, anybody who can pay us quicker, um, what we're owed, only, only what's fair, of course, um, is obviously going to be our number one choice as a, as a business partner. Within gambling, I think we're seeing adoption, but very slowly. And I think we're seeing it generally in kind of some of the edge cases around gambling. Whereas in other industries like fashion, like sport, um, like art, etc., there's a wholesale revolution that's beginning to happen. A transaction fee, you know, what's it on Ethereum at the moment? 50 bucks, 40 bucks, <laughs> 70 bucks? I don't know. That's just for one transaction. But if you can get the transaction fees down to an acceptable level, let's call it a cent or two cents or half a cent, then you can actually start to manage a business. And so this is where sort of blockchain can now start to be used as a utility application. And it will benefit the operator in the long run, the player, and of course the regulator. And Stefan, from your perspective, what do regulators think about using blockchain in this way, using it as a, a back-end technology? I, I think you, you said it earlier, education is, is key. Um, so with the whole blockchain space, there is all the stakeholders involved. Uh, there is an enormous amount of education that is still required and that's kind of required on an ongoing basis. So I think it's probably still relatively early days. I think that um, we've moved a long way than where we were five years ago. Very good. Well, we are completely out of time. We actually ran over. So <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much, the panelists, for sharing your expertise. Thank you guys for joining us. And I think, you know, what's holding us as an industry back is uh, on a regulatory front. The agame industry is highly regulated. And that means that in order to stay compliant, um, you know, we, we, we have to adhere to the regulators. And, if, and usually what ends up happening, there's a new technology that comes, and then the regulators, they lag behind into actually being able to understand this technology and then how to let their uh, their license holders uh, operate with the technology and stay compliant. So that I think is what's holding the industry back and we've seen other industries that are embracing the technology much quicker, um, that are less, but they are less regulated. So the whole of the year is about educating the audience into the benefits of utilising the blockchain other than you know, the usual, oh it's payments, oh it's this, oh it's NFTs, it's tokens. No, there are so many more um, applications for the use of, of, uh, of the BSV technology. So looking back over the past few days, let me summarize what I've learned. First of all, I think that within the gambling industry, when it comes to blockchain technology, People are really interested in NFTs. This is the one thing that gets them really excited straight away, but no one really knows how to use them in the gambling space just yet. Even if we will be able to use them is a question. People have moved away from talking about the price of the coins. I haven't had anybody ask me how much a BTC is worth or Ethereum. So that's, that's a bit of a step forward there, I'd say. Crypto as payments is still interesting for people. I'd say that the idea that blockchain tech can be used for 
uh, regulatory compliance like Kenze on the end chain has built is something new for people here at WGES. There's, there's clearly a need for more education on this and uh, that is for sure on Enchain's agenda into 2022, so that's great news. But the idea of blockchain as a utility application in the gambling space is where I think the most excitement is for this technology and really look forward to educating uh, more people on this. Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin wallet, blockchain, stablecoins, metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today, but what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Bitcoin 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain.